Hey everybody, Ezor here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get 3 stars for all of the maps on Overcooked. Now this isn't going to be an in-depth walkthrough, this is going to be general tips and tricks, and as such, if you need help with one specific map, I will be having a couple that gave me some trouble, uh, individual videos uh, a little bit later, going a little more in-depth in the whole everything, so. Right off the bat, you will start off, um, you really kind of want to make sure, like in real life, you're going to want to prep up as much as possible. So whenever possible, if you're able to kind of create shortcuts, so to speak, when one person's chopping and using the other chef to kind of set up the ingredients, that's going to be your best bet for a lot of things. Taking just one chef, grabbing the ingredient, and then running out there will not always work out. So it works out for the first couple stages, but as you keep going, it will kind of get more and more complex. So make sure to do that. Now, biggest thing too, obviously watch the top parts. Um, you're going to want to make sure to watch the time as well because there's going to be a couple of times where you'll be counting down the last seconds and you won't actually need to do the last two to three spots. And you're actually better off just skipping it and doing some of the easier ones. So for the burger ones, just make sure as many you make as many patties as you do need uh, orders fulfilled. So for this one, I need 160. With tips, you generally will need about seven or so orders filled. So I'd make at least seven burgers and just plan on just at least, at least doing that much meat um, since the lettuce and the tomatoes are always optional. So just like I said, just keep pumping out those uh, burgers. I would just put the buns right onto the plates just to kind of help save some time again. But ultimately, you'll need to be chopping up every single one, no matter what, always be making uh, the burger patties. Uh, so. Another little tip that I found useful is more often than not is if you are walking with an ingredient or an item, you can actually drop it and you are, uh, it's fine to land on the floor unlike in real life. So what you'll do more often than not is you'll just end up throwing stuff to kind of sort of speak, so to speak at the other chefs. So just make sure to grab those things. Just take advantage of that whenever you can. It's like right there with the earthquake one, you'll obviously want to drop things in the upper floor to the bottom floor. This one gave me some serious trouble uh, just in the fact that you do need to kind of keep moving the whole time. And again, here's where I was talking about the whole prepping thing. You should have one chef always grabbing ingredients and chopping at all times no matter what because you need to chop so many things for the soups. It's really kind of annoying, but you're going to want to do that. One thing they should have mentioned uh, that they never actually mentioned in the game is that you can dash. Now, this is huge. Had I known this way earlier, it would have saved me a lot of headaches and a lot of time. I didn't find out until about it till the, uh, the end of the game, really. So make sure that you always end up um, dashing around. I, for the Xbox, it's B. I don't know what it is for other controllers or setups. So make sure that you're always dashing around. Now, a couple of tips for the mobile ones. There's going to be a couple of these here. I would have one chef always on one platform and the other on the other one. So like here, you just kind of have two on two. Make sure that you always end up having one on each section just so that way they can complete the order orders, put stuff in, watch the uh, patties, and again, kind of prepping everything for the actual burgers themselves. Here too, I would recommend throwing things from the side to side because you can actually end up, um, when, the, when they're together, if you just throw all the ingredients that are chopped up onto the other one, that way you can get back to chopping faster and you're saving some time. Now this one, 2-2, this was very annoying. This is the one with the mouse. Um, biggest thing I can say here is that if you take the pots off of the burners, and actually put them on the counter kind of like where the mushrooms are at you actually can end up prepping them and putting them in there and then just throwing them on the stove to cook later so that way your ingredients don't get taken up by mice and you can actually you can end up preventing lost time with the mice taking this stuff so again uh, that's going to come into play a little bit later so make sure to remember that tip that you can actually put three items into the pot before you put it on the burner Now, the ice levels. These are annoying as all heck. You'll end up getting a little used to the whole uh, moving around and having to kind of sort of drift into 
the uh, the item or wherever you're trying to go, but the biggest thing to watch for is just um, where you're stopping, because especially when you're trying to chop things, if you end up stopping way too way too late, you'll end up going through and then stop the chopping, and that's that's a big no-no in this game. So again, you'll get used to the drifting after a little bit, but just kind of take play, just take heart the fact that it is kind of annoying. So. Now with the missions where you actually end up going across here like this, uh, again, I would have one chef just running back and forth while the other one's chopping. For this one in particular, I only used the one um, burner up top there and it just kind of made sense because you can end up having everything on that screen on that side. Because already you'll have all the stuff on there and you can just pretty much keep that burner going as long as uh, somebody's chopping. So again, just kind of watch for that. Now for the Haunted Mansion ones, the biggest thing I can uh, advise you on is just at least get ready to play through them at least twice just so that way you know where everything rotates because they all rotate a little bit differently. The Pitch Black one was probably the easiest one because you just have to memorize where everything was at, but other than that it's not so bad. As for conveyor ones, I haven't really mentioned them as so far. Biggest tip I can mention for a conveyor is throw everything you can on the conveyor at the other person, like here. If you end up throwing uh, the, the dough, the cheese, and everything except for the tomatoes, obviously, right on the conveyor, the other person can pretty much make it and just be done with it versus having to wait for the prep time to be done and then throw it over there. So it's it saves some time if you end up just throwing all the stuff right on the conveyor and they can take care of it later. Anytime there's a conveyor, just try to do that whenever there's split resources. Try to send everything over you can. As for the space levels, these weren't too terrible once you kind of got used to it. The biggest thing for those is just, again, making sure that uh, you have one chef going. So like here, you can only have one chef um, access to the ingredients. So pretty much grab a whole bunch of stuff, start working on it, and send it over. The hell one, the first one wasn't so bad. The second one though, this one was much more annoying, but you just kind of figured out that all of the ingredients end up doing a giant figure eight. So as long as you kind of kept that in mind, you weren't too bad. I definitely would recommend uh, always having something cooking and just take it off as soon as it gets to the other person, even if they don't need it. So that way it doesn't burn because you can almost always end up just having it sit there until you actually do need it. This one again, I would just be prepping all the time with something chopping. So make sure that the uh, the meat and the other stuff is going as much as you can. Now for this space one, this one gave me a lot of trouble and had a lot of retries on it, so I definitely would recommend uh, having the chopper going to town. Like almost always be chopping something. So here I throw three things on the track and I also I start getting the pot like I had mentioned earlier. You definitely want to send the pot down and then basically when they're chopping start sending some more stuff down because they're always going to need to be chopping no matter what. If you end up throwing everything in the pot and then end up taking the pot and uh, sending it back, they can cook it later while more things are being chopped. It does kind of come down a little bit to luck factor because you're going to need to have, if you have one onion right off the bat like I have, you want to have at least one to two uh, mushroom or tomato ones coming down. Now, this is 6-1. This one is very annoying. Check out the video on this one as to how I got through the entire thing. Biggest thing I can say is prep, prep, prep. Dashing is the key to victory on this one. And also make sure that you are always working with two chefs in the bottom. It is just, it's night and day once I figured that out. So you need to make sure you have that second chef in the bottom. That's about it. Like I said, this is general tips and tricks for everything. Definitely would recommend um, always just trying things out. Expect to run through a couple of times on every single stage just because it does take some time to kind of get used to everything. Uh, the final mission here is just what I have in the background. It really wasn't all that bad and I got three stars on it my first try with only a minute left so just kind of keep up with everything and you'll be fine overall. And there you have it. If you are looking for help on a specific level uh, for getting three stars I do have a playlist for a couple of them that I'm look uh, I, I had some serious trouble with so Check those out. If you don't see the level that you're stuck on there, go ahead and leave me a comment somewhere and I'll make a video just explaining in depth how I got the three stars with it. If you like other game related content, that's kind of what I do, so consider subscribing. 
Thank you all for watching. I've been Ezor. Until next time, keep your story going. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,